I don't know, maybe we can um, go into that. I don't know if I was clear, but um, uh, was I clear? Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, maybe just to warm up the, um, for the discussion, because I think you, in, in, in all the lecture, I think you touched some of the, um, the concept that I think that we are very much struggling you know, and, and, and to discuss. So I just would like to come back to, to some of them and why you might think about what you would like to, to ask to mind. Um, but what it seems to me, let's say, going back to, um, to what the mayor answered, no, it was this is a camp, this is a city, which is I think something that we are also very much trying to investigate. I think maybe his answer was at the end uh, was correct because I think what the camp would uh, open in, uh, in front of us is just trying to imagine what is this new uh, formation no? as definitely a new DNA. Because in fact, it's not a camp in a sense, in the traditional sense of being made of tents and being temporary. Mm -hmm. um, and also it's not, let's say, a camp uh, as a city, as you know, traditionally we can think about the city, because also the city, I mean, difficult today even to think about really what is the, a city. But definitely, I think this is maybe the absolutely interesting part in which you start the emerge in, in during your lecture that you at the end go back to the very essential elements of what constitutes a, a spatial and political community. You know, it reduced really to, to its essence. In that sense, the re your research on camps is, is relevant for whoever thinks about you know, what made the essence of, of a community you know, in terms of space, political and society. I think this is what every single definition that somehow became, became meaningful. And one thing that I, I somehow start to think about during uh, during your lecture, it was um, it was the way in which um, this idea of temporariness, the fact that um, in a way it taps open, also paradoxically create the possibility of a political change. So we can look also at the camp in that way. You know? That fortunately things are not closed, because the moment that you close up things, and the moment actually that this last pot became a nation state, it seems to me that then all the hope is all political. You just close up all every hope. So there is a paradox in that. And of course it's kind of provocation. No? If to say, if, if the end of this political struggle, and if the end is actually just to be put on, on this nation state map, is the ultimate goal, it's also a closing of any political hope of, um, for example, living without the idea of ownership or uh, imagining that it put, might be a society that actually doesn't use money. I mean, there are all these elements that emerged during your yeah. conference that are absolutely uh, interesting. And I think yeah. if these elements will be lost in the idea of formation of a nation state, because you, know, you then have to normalize your, uh, your situation into the national community, then I think you, you lose you know, some of this or originality and, and hope that actually are embodied in this, uh, in this kind of life. So this, it seems to me, uh, one of the very challenging and difficult elements that we are all working on is how this temporariness also allows to think a different kind of political formation that would not necessarily end up in having um, you know, the, the normal ministry kind of structure, which is now problematic, I think, everywhere, uh, everywhere in a way. So, um, I don't know, there were also, let's say, somehow other points, maybe I, if I have time, I would like to go back, but this is just to, yeah. to start with, uh, with that, yeah. Yeah, no, you, I, I completely agree, uh, and, and you point out something uh, extremely interesting, and, <coughs> and uh, how the, the camp can be a laboratory of ideas, concepts that are possible because of its liminal uh, kind of condition. Um, uh, and that's a, a kind of a fascinating uh, idea here that is really kind of put in practice here. The idea of creating a society which is um, not dependent on money and, and which kind of allows to get rid of a um, a traditional tribal-based structure and so on, 
already arose during colonial, <laughs> end of the colonial period. So the Polisario was, uh, let's say, a socialist uh, movement. Um, it's a bit crude label, but allow me to use that for the moment. And, um, uh, and it was uh, then put in practice in, in the camp. And the question is whether it would have been possible to, to um, uh, put in practice um, uh, if they would have uh, remained in the um, uh, in the home homeland. The, if we go back to the mayor, um, yes, there is. Um, he's completely valid in, in saying in refusing to um, uh, to use the word city for the for the camp. But it also comes with a slight nostalgia uh, and maybe a dangerous nostalgia of. Um, when he says like, our cities in the Western Sahara had trees and were green and were nice and pleasant and and the birds were um, uh, chirping and, and blah blah blah, so, <coughs> um, uh, and it, it's a dangerous nostalgia because I, I guess it wasn't really like that and and uh, if that is the aim in the end to recreate that after um, yes you fall back into a kind of a, a traditional um, models which are maybe a shame after the experience. Another question is like. Do they have like uh, documents, official documents, identity, yes. travel documents? Yes, yes. Related to who? Um, they have um, Sarawi. Uh, no, the, the Sarawi state, S, S A D R, Sarawi blah, 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 Democratic Republic. Um, uh, Sarawi Arab, Arab Democratic Republic, S A D R. Um, that issues uh, identity cards. They are only accepted within Algeria. Um, but Algeria would provide them with international travel documents. And it's thing. like it, it's they get the documents from this refugee camp, or they get it from Western Sahara. No, the Western Sahara, in a way, you know, there's the doesn't uh, liberated uh, area. The, the liberated area. areas is unoccupied. Hmm. Um, the liberated areas is is almost unoccupied. It's not occupied by a few camel herders. Um, they refuse to occupy the liberated areas because that would be a sign of acceptance of the occupation. Now that If they would settle in the liberated areas, it would uh, be a sign of accepting that part. We want this. Uh, so they, they stay out of it um, by, by intention. No, all administration only plays in the camps. The, the camp is the nation. Um, there's there are Sahrawis in the occupied parts of, like living under Moroccan uh, um, rule, um, but in a way the state is the camps. State is out. Uh, speaking about the aid that they are receiving from Spain and uh, distributed by the Red Cross, uh, where is if, if they have uh, UN agencies like UNHCR working there or not? Very few. Um, UNHCR is, is present, but basically it doesn't do anything. Um, uh, the aid comes in. Uh, WFP is there. Um, um, but again, what is different, I don't know the camps here um, so well, but I know other camps in Africa. And um, in other camps, WFP distributes the food uh, and decides who gets whom and what, who gets how much. In uh, the Sarawi camps, it's the Sarawi organizations. They accept the, the food from WFP and then, then they distribute it. Um, so the, um, in a way, they can decide from whom to accept uh, donations and from whom not to accept donations. Um, uh, WFP is only bringing in the stuff uh, and handing it over to Sarawi administration. Yeah, my question uh, would be is, um, so technically, Algerian government have donated the land yeah. for the Saharans, right? Yeah. And they have full independence. They sell over the land and they articulate their life yeah. the way they, they want to. But my question is, since they are within the territory of Algeria, do they have connections with Algerian cities? Yeah, yeah. They go fairly often to Tindouf, which is like 20 kilometers away and uh, go there for, to get shop, um, food or um, mm -hmm. provisions or um, to use the internet cafes because they don't work in the camps or uh, yeah they, they go fairly often it's um, um, like you saw the checkpoints uh, are open for the Sahrawis they go into the city and, and it's uh, that's easy just to follow up yeah, with yeah. this uh, the reason why I ask is because I would like 
uh, to know if there are people moving from Dakar toward the cities of Algeria. Yeah. There's and an incredible, I mean, this was impressive, and I, I don't think I was kind of indoctrinated or, or um, uh, that, um, um, I, I think I s kind of had the ability to see uh, what was going on. Uh, it's incredible to see that um, there is a, very much a kind of a national consciousness that yes, you go to Spain for a year to go to university or for two years to do your kind of doctoral studies, and come, but then you come back. Uh, you go to uh, Cuba is, is a big supporter of the uh, Sahrawis, you go to Cuba to uh, study medicine and then you come back. Um, uh, many uh, Sahrawis used to be in Syria before the trouble started, um, um, but almost all of them come back. Um, there's a, the population in the camps is very stable. Um, it has uh, been 160,000, it's slightly growing, it's not decreasing. Um, and uh, so there's a uh, kind of a consciousness um, to um, yeah, return. Uh, if, you, if you go out to, to get education, you come back um, uh, to live in the camps. Um, uh, that was quite impressive in the way to see. Actually, during the, the presentation, I saw a lot of similarities between the Sahara uh, refugees and the Palestinian refugees from many, many dimensions. Yes. Since the, the beginning of the Palestinian issues and uh, the Sahari issues. Sahari or Sahari? You say? Sahari. Sahari. Sahari issues. Sahari. And both were very, let's say, marginalized, very, very weak, very because they lost everything suddenly. And uh, were for, found themselves uh, forced to move outside their land. And then by time passing, they like managed to, 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 to manage their life by, by their own, yeah. to create something very impressive out yeah. of this. And in terms of also of the very, like the, the idea of protecting this uh, ex political exceptionality that yeah. they hold, the status that they, they hold, and that's at the same time, this doesn't prevent them from doing something inside the camp. With, yeah. with keeping, protecting this this idea. It's very much the same idea in the, in the Palestinian camp. Yeah. How the Palestinian camp has performed since the Nakba until now, yeah. with keeping the, the, the this exceptionality, it's something amazing and something in common, I think, between yeah. the two stories. So yes. I'm really impressed by this. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. No, it is, it is uh, I think the, there is, um, the relation or the, the comparisons are, are on the one hand obvious uh, or, or, or are, are uh, extremely interesting. Um, there is differences though and, and maybe it would be interesting to go into that. Um, I asked Alessandro a little bit over lunch uh, because I don't know enough about the situation here. What you have in the, um, in the Sahari, uh, in the Sahrawi uh, uh, situation is relatively clear this relationship between population, um, a political representation uh, and and the administration. You, know, you have the population living in the camps, and let's say it's the whole of the Sahrawis living in the camps. Yes, we have others, but let's let's say for the moment, a bit imprecise. All of the Sahrawis live in the camps. Um, there's very few who don't live in the camps. Um, there is a kind of a political system of representation. They vote every two years uh, for a kind of camp. Uh, leaders, um, they have parties, or they have one party which has different kind of um, sides, um, uh, and they uh, and the camps vote for a national representation um, <coughs> into the national assembly. They have a president and a prime minister. Uh, they govern uh, the camps. Um, here, I think the situation is more kind of difficult because you obviously not only have the Palestinian refugees, you have the Palestinians who live who don't live in the uh, camps. Um, you have uh, international organizations, UNRWA, you have Israel, you have um, uh, Palestinian, um, um, uh, polit uh, you have the pas Palestinian politics outside of the camps and you have political representation inside of the camps. So it's much more, let's say, multidimensional. It's a little bit clearer, uh, let's say, there. Um, who governs whom or who is governed by whom. Um, there it's, it's very clear that the population has its political representation. They make the rules how to uh, kind of lead the, their lives. Um, and here, I think you have other in kind of influences, or you are, you are influenced by other factors, of course. Um, that's 
at least one, but maybe I, it would be interesting to hear from you how you perceive this uh, difference. For Palestinians, it was so easy. Sometimes I think extremely, uh, we arrived to the point that it was so simple and, and, and I think that we even did not figure it out if this is the right way to represent ourselves or not. But it was basically the key, the document, the village, and, and you go to any NGO here and you find all the images of the villages here and there. I'm quite curious which kind of representation they have for this nostalgic vision of where do they want to return back? Do, yeah. do they have it or it's something only mentioned? Yeah, mm -hmm. like quite simple national imagery of the flag, which you see everywhere. Um, uh, and the flag is the flag. It means not the nation in in the camp. It, the the flag means the the homeland. And it means the home country. It means the Western Sahara. Um, so they also, and I never really understood. They also refused to call themselves. I, I, I think there's a little bit of a let's say schizophrenia involved in that they govern the nation as if they already governed their their home country. Uh, yeah, but they, they don't have this kind of, they don't have a key, uh, as they also don't have photographs of their home, uh, of their houses or, or, or something like that. There is, <coughs> so there is a kind of imagery taken from the home country to the camps, uh, in the sense that all the camps are named after cities from the Western Sahara, so El Ayon, Dakhla, Asmara and so on are the names of the camps, but are originally names of the cities. What is the criteria to, 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 to create or to, to say something is symbol? What is it collective agreement, collective something, or is it, is it social and intellectual uh, fabric between the people? There is not a, there's not a clear declaration, yes, we use the, the tent as a symbol, <coughs> um, but there is a, uh, it carries this additional meaning. No, there's not a kind of a, uh, a rule uh, that um, everybody needs to uh, build a tent uh, in order to symbolize or to um, uh, to show this and this and this. Um, but um, over time, the functional, no, the, the let's say the rational functions of the tent diminished, and the more symbolic functions of the tent were overlaid. But both coexists uh, uh, together. Mm -hmm.